first item would be adoption of the agenda. So we need second. On adoption then, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Before we get to the business of this meeting, we do have a special presentation. And uh, I would like to call uh, Bob McQuillan forward. Uh, just come to the mill here and I'll move around as well. We have uh, recently honored Bob at our uh, Nautical Days lunch with uh, a uh, nice plaque and uh, let me just mm -hmm. right in here. as well uh, some flowers for Judy, of course. <laughs> but we also have the opportunity through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to uh, issue one of the Diamond Jubilee medals to uh, a citizen in our community. And uh, with uh, some deliberation, our council has selected you, Bob, for all your uh, service to uh, Thank you. receive the Jubilee Medal, which is, of course, on the 60th anniversary of the Queen's ascension to the throne back in 1952. Remember what you're doing then? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was nautical days. <laughs> <laughs> nautical days uh, for the last 28 years, anyway, and yes. certainly all your service. So we have a suitably framed uh, 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 certificate. Uh, with your name on it, of course, and the uh, medallion. And you'll have to confer with Councillor Tom Grant. There is a set of instructions on how and when to wear it. I've got them right here. Yeah, they're in the envelope there. Uh, you got to follow the Queen's <laughs> orders in that yes. regard. But uh, certainly well deserving, and uh, thank you again for all your service. Thank you. Uh, 
I understand that Courtney too is, has uh, uh, found a potential rotation. Yeah, they're looking at Hermiston Park, but I don't right. think they've made any formal decisions in that regard. probably 
is where you're getting the 7 and 10. I do believe that although the component would have to determine its own subdivision um, uh, outline as approved by the planning uh, approving officer. Council's being asked to consider whether it's the appropriate to rezone it to that smaller lot size. So the numbers aren't as directly relevant as the lot sizes. Mm -hmm. It depends what the yeah. time made it to be. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor. I think the original proposal was for seven lots, but even under that zoning, I believe they could do eight. So we're really not talking about the difference between seven and ten. We're talking about the difference between eight and ten, which is just two lots. Thank you for that comment. Thank you. Um, again, as I stated at third reading, I found this a, a very difficult and challenging um, decision. Uh, probably one of the most difficult in 10 years of sitting at this table. Um, I recognize that the impact of this development on, on the neighborhood are many of my friends, um, acquaintances, and um, I have not by any means taken this lightly. Um, that being said, um, the neighborhood was a very vital piece of my consideration, but uh, additionally, the community as a whole has to be considered and how that will impact our entire community. Um, it's a puzzle that has to be, many, many facets have to come together. Um, again, my 10 years on council, I've been fortunate to be um, attended many workshops and conferences and the information and education that I've gained over the years leads me to believe that this is the right decision to make a better community going forward. Um, it may seem like a small thing, eight, eight lots or ten lots, but it, it's the turning point. It's saying, you know what, we're not going to do things the same old way. We're going to make a, a better community. We're going to make better towns and, and cities. And we're going to do it in a smaller, more compact way, a more sustainable way. And again, I spoke about the three fundamentals of uh, the economics of it. We can make, um, we can build on existing infrastructure, not incur more costs by accommodating growth in this manner. Um, environmentally, we're not extending our boundaries, we're accommodating growth, we're not sprawling, we're infilling density. And socially, I spoke to the fact that perhaps these smaller lots would mean smaller houses and smaller price tags, and that might make uh, a home in amongst that much more affordable. And we know that is our. Um, social concern in Comox today. Additionally, uh, the situation of the, air, the, the land is close to two schools. It's on a transit route. It's on a bike route. It's close to the rec center. And uh, all those pieces are critical to making a, a good community. Safety was a big concern that we heard, and um, I certainly heard it, and I, and I have to be compelled to believe the professionals in the project study. My hope is, in addition, that the infill in that lot will slow the traffic down. Right now, it's a broad sight line. You can just think you can keep speeding all the way around that corner. I think if compromise the sight line with homes, I would hope that the speeding will, um, should there be any, will be um, addressed by that. Um, so I thank you for the ability to, to express my thoughts. And again, um, <clears throat> Just to, uh, I don't want to reiterate everything that uh, Councillor Fletcher said, but a lot of what she was talking about, those were the drivers <laughs> that guided us throughout our whole OCP process. And, you know, the creation of R3.1 and the designation of all these little infill sites in, into R3.1 for all those very reasons that, you know, we shouldn't be looking outside our town boundaries to, you know, to accommodate growth. Growth has to be accommodated within our town boundaries. And this is one way of doing it. And if it's you know an extra two lots in the neighborhood, I don't think when this is all built out that it's going to have a significant impact on the neighbors. And you know, I understand their concerns at this point, but uh, I think they should be patient watch it build out. There's not going to be 10 suites in there on 10 houses. Because uh, we know the uptick on suites is very low, like 1 in 10 perhaps. So, uh, you know, it's a difficult decision, as Councillor Fletcher says, but 
you know, we, we've got to have some teeth in our uh, OCP and, you know, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and lots of time and effort on that, so. And just a uh, point of clarification on procedures for Councillor McKinnon's benefit. If we wanted to have an amendment, we have to um, defeat the uh, adoption motion. We send third readings and then go back through uh, a second meeting with public hearing. Public hearing. All right, so uh, on adoption then, are you ready for a question? All those in favor? Those opposed? Two opposed? Motion's carried. And on the issuance of the development variance permit, 11-8. Move that the issue. Second. Okay. Second. Seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Those opposed? Two opposed? Motion's carried. All right, we'll move on to uh, page 27. This is uh, for 640 Anderton Road, the zoning application, RZ 1116, and the development permit application, DP 1114. And the first recommendation is that bylaw 1731 be adopted. Move adoption. Second. Second. Any discussion on this adoption? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried. And that the phase development agreement bylaw also be adopted. Move adoption. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion is carried. All right. Um, we are now moving on to the third recommendation in this regard, and that is the issuance of development permit DP 1114, subject to resolution of outstanding items and the DP conditions contained in this report. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, that completes the unfinished business. We're moving on to special reports. And we have the minutes of the Regional District Board meeting on July 31st. Receive. Second. Second. On receipt, then. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Any coming out of those notes? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. 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 Thank Second, on adoption, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Under new business, staff have brought forward some a series of resolutions which relate to the corporate visa cards with the Bank of Nova Scotia and the CEO. Do you have any further comments on that? Now, this is something, uh, some security that uh, the bank is looking for that uh, what they initially wanted was uh, essentially a borrowing bylaw authorizing these credit cards, <coughs> which we were not really in support of, and uh, we believe that this, this, these resolutions cover their issues about uh, security for the so-called temporary borrowing when we do use the credit cards, and the limits that we've established on the cards are relatively low, so there's very little risk here. Plus, this is uh, getting any more. Yes. Can we move all five resolutions? We certainly can. I move all five resolutions. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay, no new issues for the vote. <laughs> all right. Under <coughs> reports, we also have the greenhouse gas reports for 2010 and 2011 for the receipt. Second. We've been seconded on receipt then. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Director of Finance did provide these reports, uh, page 63 and 64. And uh, we have provided some allowance in our budgeting process, I know, for the offsets. And uh, I understand there's a presentation next week on the estuary, uh, the so-called blue carbon offset program. So we'll see where that goes. Any further questions for the staff? Or comments on this report? Yes. I'm, I'm just wondering what the process from here is that uh, at some point we will be looking at uh, how we do the offsets. We have to become uh, carbon neutral by 2012, correct, right, Yes. And so we'll either have to buy the offsets or uh, contribute in some other way to uh, reducing those uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And we, do, we have budgeted in five years before that. So the hope is perhaps through something like the Blue Carbon Project, those monies can be invested locally. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. 
Okay, uh, do we go mm -hmm. Okay, so we've received it. And uh, nothing further, we'll carry on. Uh, the amendment of a point home sanitary sewer lift station and local area service to add a property to that that requires a bylaw. So bylaw 17.4 is before us for first, second, and third reading. Second. Okay. We've been seconded. Um, it's just adding one property, I believe, on sign the question. All in favor? Uh, the correspondence, we have some letters. First of all, we're going to Terry Fox event, looking for our permission to bring uh, boots, uh, a roof, including a cycling option within the town hall. So that's at page 71. What are you looking for, Just a uh, motion to approve and uh, receive. Okay. Motion to receive and approve the request. Okay. I'll second. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, the Green Communities uh, Committee Climate Action Recognition Program. Uh, it's just a letter uh, to uh, acknowledge a, uh, our obligations under the Climate Action Letter. And um, there will be some recognition programs as we go along, so that'll tie in some of the work we do. More information just from EDC on this. Thank you. Move receipt. Thank you. All in favor? That's great. Uh, thank you, letter from the Comox Valley Park County for receipt. Second. Okay. All in favor? And the last piece of correspondence, letter from Don Davis regarding the uh, police board. Number six, refer to Susan Wood, our nautical days. Um, cooler. Refer to the nautical days committee. Yeah. Committee, yeah. Okay, so we refer to the nautical days committee. Yeah. Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion is carried. Reports from members of council. We'll start with council question. Okay, um, since we last met, um, I attended uh, the ride the next day with the McKinnon brothers up from Parkstone. So, again, congratulations to them for their uh, efforts in Parkinson's disease awareness and fundraising. Um, Later in July, I attended Project Watershed's uh, Estuary Experience Day down at the um, Anacol. Attended some nautical days meetings uh, leading up to the big, big days. Uh, I attended the uh, minutes that we received at the CBRD board meeting, and just a, a note on that was um, that meeting we were um, presenting the a Diamond Jubilee Medal to Ruth Masters on behalf of the regional district. Uh, attended the Filbert Festival and volunteered there on their opening day. And on uh, Nautical Days weekend, I also made it over to Courtney to attend the Comox Valley Art Gallery reception. It was the opening of the new exhibit, which is on right now, The Legacy of the Corniche. And um, I would certainly say that is a must-see for everyone. Um, fantastic pieces of work from several uh, Native artists um, in our area. And of course, over the weekend, the Nautical Days attended everything from Great pancake breakfast put on by the Rotary Clubs and Old Head Derby. Elvis was great as ever, and um, the fireworks, and of course, the mayor's lunch. And last uh, weekend, I was uh, another Jubilee Award celebration at uh, the Big House for Andy Everson. Happy to attend that. And it was a nice event. And yesterday, I attended the CDRD Sewer Water and Community Council was with. Okay, uh, since we last met, I attended the Philbert, Philbert Park Lodge uh, board meeting, and I also attended their volunteer orientation for their um, festival uh, volunteers, which was really quite interesting. And of course, I went to the Philbert Festival, uh, attended the nautical days in the park, and I assisted with the official opening of the Philbert Festival. They tried to make it a bit of a a celebration this year with a piper and, and some uh, officials and some of the older uh, and original members of the festival. Uh, uh, participated in the parade and attended the mayor's lunch. And um, I went to the meeting for elected officials uh, of Dr. Ricky Ott uh, regarding the pipeline. I went to um, the Community in Bloom celebration for the judges that at the mess. I 
attended the prime opening of the shop post. And uh, just today, went on the appreciation sale uh, on, uh, at Quadra. So it was a great day on the water today. It's wonderful. Yes, and I also attended the presentation by uh, Dr. Ricky Ott, uh, who's a marine toxicologist, and she was speaking on oil contamination and the associated community risks. And she has been, I think she's been doing it for 20 odd years, uh, going around North America. Um, I certainly enjoyed the, uh, all the nautical days activities. Uh, I attended the, um, and also I went over to the Courtney Art, Art Gallery, and I'd like to uh, just echo um, uh, Councillor Fletcher's comments that it is incredible to have that collection all in one room, and it's uh, quite an amazing, quite an amazing sight. Um, I also attended the uh, big house to see the pres presentation to Andy Everson of the Dan Jubilee Medal. I attended the Comox Valley RCMP Chapel dedication of um, St. Andrew's Heritage Church. And I was on today's uh, appreciation sale, which was <laughs> wonderful. And the <coughs> lots, and we saw men overboard, practices, and and uh, yeah, we were treated very, very well, very much appreciated. Councilor McKinnon. Yes, uh, the uh, board of the Community Justice Center were invited to meet with uh, NDP uh, uh, MLA caucus uh, in regards to the uh, Comox Valley Restorative Justice Operation and Initiatives. They had a good meeting there. Uh, support of the Sid Williams Theater, uh, along with Councillor Tom Grant, uh, by seeing Les Miserables. Uh, Tom was not my date, my wife was, but we both went to see Les Miserables. We uh, attended the CFP Comox uh, Communities in Bloom event, along with a couple of other councillors, uh, both the operations of CFP Comox and their connections to communities. I uh, attended the speaker, Dr. Ott, in regards to uh, pipeline health dangers and, and the spills. Uh, attended the Comox Valley Art Gallery First Nations uh, show with uh, several other councillors here. Uh, the Nautical Days Parade I participated in, but you won't guess who I was in the parade. Uh, attended the Mayor's Luncheon, uh, the uh, Community Restorative Justice Budget Meeting last week. Uh, uh, participated in the Town of Comox uh, Golf Tournament, along with some very uh, 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 exceptional golfers, two of which are sitting over at the table across from the <laughs> And uh, uh, the art show at Marina Park, uh, Joel Smith uh, organized the uh, community art shows on the weekend. And finally, uh, uh, today there's an en energy management workshop by FAME uh, on asset management systems presented at the school board office today with uh, uh, invitations to councillors. And I uh, look forward to sharing that with uh, Richard and some of the town folks. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I attended the uh, RD board meeting back in late July. I was at the mayor's luncheon and of course the nautical day celebrations. I chaired a water committee meeting. I chaired a sewer commission meeting. I was at the RD committee of the whole meeting and uh, I am the chair of that select committee on uh, handing out that VHA grant money. So there's more on that. All right, uh, since we last met, I did participate in the uh, return of the Viking for Baja Brothers uh, away from the Nanaimo. It was a, a good ride, lots of fun uh, getting to know the McKinnon boys on that ride. Quite a remarkable journey. Uh, Shane Simpson was uh, part of the NDP caucus that was here. He is the caucus chair, and he met with myself and Mayor Barry uh, one morning uh, while they were here and just talked about local government issues. And I uh, thought that was a good, uh, good discussion. The, uh, there's a number of graduation parades throughout the summer uh, for the glider program, the Sea Cadets. Um, I attended the first of the glider uh, parades uh, last month, and then the Sea Cadets uh, invite the mayors to participate in an annual review, and uh, they uh, are great hosts, they treat us to lunch, and we also had uh, the newly installed Maritime Pacific Commander, Admiral Trula, here as the future reviewing officer. It's worth noting that uh, HMCS Quadra, of course, has been here for a number of years, but the Sea Cadets as an organization have, uh, are celebrating their 60th anniversary as well. So coincidental with uh, the Queen's Jubilee. Uh, I attended 
portion of the evening uh, for the estuary event and a photo op for the Mayor's Golf Tournament. And just uh, worth noting that is Friday, September 7th. I know there's a couple teams entered here uh, through council members and staff members. And we have a crown out. Participated in the ribbon cutting at the Philbrook Festival and several nautical days events, including the parade, the lunch, and of course the always popular ceremony of the flags where the sea cadets so really show their stuff after a very busy weekend, which sees them go down to Victoria and back and then come perform because they're down in Victoria for the St. Louis Flash. So, quite a busy weekend for them. Also, in terms of parades, a uh, change of command this year for both 407 Squadron and for. Um, 442 squadron, at least today. 407 squadron, Dave Robinson um, has uh, relinquished his command to uh, Jason Kenny, and not the cabinet Mr. Jason Kenny, but a, a Colonel Jason Kenny. And that was a great event. And also today, the change of command for 442 squadron. I'm sure all these names right here. We have um, the new uh, 442 squadron commander who is uh, Todd Sharp. And he's uh, replacing Jonathan Bouchard. So uh, always a great parade, and they uh, do it up very well. And certainly uh, great to see uh, 19 Wing uh, alive and well. Uh, the Prime Chop House, yes, I did attend the opening of that. And the town staff golf barbecue. Also participated in last weekend's farm cycling tour. Did the route all the way up to um, uh, Coastal Black Winery and back. And uh, that was a great. Uh, day actually, almost a full day uh, cycling and checking out farms, uh, everything from turkey farms to berry farms to the wineries. So it was pretty cool. And certainly uh, well attended, lots of people. And, uh, uh, and got quite enough cycling in that day. So the next day I went to Parksville and did the Bike for Your Life event, uh, which uh, was a great community event down there, and that was 100k. So um, I was pretty tired on Sunday night. <laughs> Um, and I should mention that the RCF band was here on uh, August 9th, and they wowed everybody in attendance. Unfortunately, it was at the shop house opening, so I didn't come to it, but apparently it was very well attended and appreciated. And I certainly talked to uh, mm -hmm. the Chief uh, Warrant Officer uh, Bolster, Dave Bolster, who coordinated that event here, and he was really appreciative of all the staff help, because they didn't really have a whole lot of budget for that, and so they appreciated anything that the town could offer. And, Every time I see him now, he just he's over the moon about it, and he uh, certainly appreciate it. And we did send a thank you letter for them. But I did see their band uh, perform at one of the change of commands, and they're really good. And then it's worth noting that tonight uh, is movie under the stars here in Colmox, eight o'clock. Uh, I guess uh, for nine o'clock, once the sun goes down. So I'm sure another great event here in Marino Park, and again, the staff from the command for keeping it looking good after all the busyness of nautical this weekend. Well, that's it. Uh, no late items. Uh, media questions at this time? Uh, yes, we want. But the greenhouse, greenhouse uh, gas report. Yes. Just, just so I'm absolutely clear, the objective is not for the town to be carbon neutral by this year, is it? No, 2012. It's 20, it's uh, end of 2012, sorry. End of 2012. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And in terms of the process for achieving that, that's only a few months away at the end of 2012. So how is that going to happen in such a short period of time? It's uh, a process of buying carbon offsets, is my understanding. We have budget for that. Okay. So yes, yeah, sorry, that is by the end of this year. Um, Anything further to add to that, Director of Finance, or CEO? We may be stopping driving on vehicles <laughs> to reduce our greenhouse gas. He's quoting me on it. And just one personal note. Um, this is my last uh, meeting uh, we covered in here. Because uh, I moved on to another job. And so just to say thank you all very much for good luck for everything. Congratulations. Bright Lights Big City or? <laughs> Bigger City. No, good stuff. Good for you. Congratulations. All the best, Spencer. Thank you. All right. Any uh, public questions? I have one. My name is Debbie Howell. Um, you keep talking about affordable housing. Could you define your expectations of affordable housing to me? I believe we have uh, some information around CP itself that talks about that. So uh, I can certainly pass that information on. It's, it's part of our community plan. Okay, I've read the community plan. Right. I don't find that it's specifically clear the definition of affordable housing. I don't know if anybody uh, else, I mean, there's uh, there's no 
portions of that which cover a range of uh, housing options from home ownership to uh, market rental to uh, non-market rental through social housing through to uh, emergency transitional housing. So the actual affordable housing, I know that a number of us have gone to different seminars on that. So yeah. Tom, you can do a couple. And, uh, well, they, they talk in terms of 30% 30% gross wages. You know, toward making mortgage payments, and I do believe that some of that material is referred to in our OCD. Some of those definitions. Okay, thank you. I think if I think if I could add that the, uh, the move by council to support secondary suites was an attempt to, to address the concerns, and some of us that have, have ki young uh, kids that are now in their twenties and that are looking for affordable housing, and we recognize that, and, and there's efforts from by council to look at a variety of things, including development, and that uh, Councillor Fletcher so eloquently spoke about today. That, that's important too. We have to balance that with tough decisions. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple of questions. And sorry, um, your name, ma'am? My name is Amanda Love. Amanda. And um, I live in the area of uh, Low and Torrance. And firstly, I would like to say that uh, by and large, we're really happy with the decisions you guys have made in terms of how you have steered Colmox. I mean, we enjoy living here. It's a beautiful community. Things are happening that are really good. However, I have to say on behalf of the group of people that your decision for this really gobsmacked us. You tossed us under the bus. There were no concessions. So you gave the developer everything. I would like to ask you what realistic measures, not having a, a curve of housing, that doesn't really cut it for me because that doesn't tell me that people are going to not continue to barge through the four-way stop and stuff. What are you going to do about that corner um, in terms of slowing people down? People are still going to come up and roll at the same speed. Um, and um, the other thing that I would like to address, what you mentioned, um, Councillor Fletcher, was that you talked about it being beneficial to the community. Well, we are the directly involved community, and I see no benefit to us at all. You guys, if you put Ten houses in its own for say eight, you get six thousand dollars more tax money per year. We get a lot of crowding. Um, I fail to understand how that benefits us, the people that live right there. How how do we benefit? Please tell me. Okay. I'll answer the first question on behalf of the town, which is okay. about traffic. Uh, we did commission a traffic safety study, a mm -hmm. comprehensive uh, twenty-year plan that tackles all sorts of issues uh, and in your neighborhood would not be the only neighborhood in town that we've heard from about traffic safety and speed and the, there will be a, a number of initiatives undertaken as part of that 20-year plan we're installing crosswalks sidewalks and uh, looking at uh, subdivision layouts as part of the development as all part of that i think driveway alignments are part of the subdivision layout as well in this particular case so uh, that's what we're guided by uh, to say quite an extensive uh, study on that and, and the recommendations are, are numerous. Um, as far as the second question goes, I mean that would be up to individual councillors to, to tell you that, uh, why they felt it was beneficial or not. Um, you know, decisions made by council and, and you know, it's, it's always going to be guided by uh, interests expressed by the public uh, both before and, after and during a public hearing. Uh, also, they're going to be guided by the comprehensive official community plan, which was just completed last year. And so, all those in consideration with uh, financial plans and budgets and infrastructure. Uh, so, it's a pretty a broad range of things that uh, council members and uh, staff, of course, bring us their advice as to what constitutes the public interest. And it doesn't always mesh with uh, private interests. Of course, there's going to be a conflict, and that's the nature of the job that councillors have to, to, to address that. And they have to make up their own minds about what they see as beneficial. And they say you may, and others may disagree with that, but ultimately it's what a council member decides based on their own uh, judgment. I guess I, I just wanted to ask a question, because when you have over 90% of the neighborhood opposing something, and you completely ignore that, and give the neighborhood nothing back, in your decision, nothing. You gave the developer everything he wanted, we got nothing. You know, I just kind of wonder what that whole public hearing process was for. You know, you ignored us. Well, I, I understand that may be your perception of it. It's, um, of 
public hearing is one part of the process. Certainly, letters submitted and other things were all worked out by members of council, and, and whatever discussions ensued before the public hearing between yourselves and members of council, uh, you know, they took those all into consideration. And I heard around this table both tonight and previous uh, that they heard those concerns, and, and they do have to make a decision one way or the other and, on a going forward basis. And staff do work with developers. Uh, there's a lot of that that probably you don't see. Um, and in terms of well, what this development will uh, be built out as, there's still work to be done in terms of the subdivision layout. What about us? What about working with us? Like, we would have liked to have been, I know we don't have a decision on how things go, mm -hmm. but if this is the way things are done, it is really nice to consult with the people who are going to be affected, even if they're, you know, but we were never approached by anybody. Well, certainly no. that's something that, yeah, that was really the development community has to address on their own terms. Um, we certainly recommend that the development community well, do that and uh, in whatever development that is being pursued. And ultimately, uh, council, again, has to make a decision based on what they hear from the public, what they hear from staff, and then uh, make a, interest, a public interest-based decision. Okay. Well, thank you. I don't know. We should just also add that you know, when we developed our official community plan over the course of about two years, we had extensive, extensive uh, community involvement, uh, neighborhood meetings, and uh, how many of them, Richard? 30? All told? Uh, close to 30. Yeah. Them. And so there was so extensive I, community I involvement. That it, it's, and and the, but at that point, we didn't know that there were going to be 10 houses on this lot, you know? That kind of got thrown at us last fall, and um, I don't, I don't know. A community, a official community plan is a living document. It's not something that's carved in stone and must be obeyed at all costs. You, you have to consider people in that as well. And there well, was. I, I know you can't. I can't change your minds. It's done. I understand, but. And there has been a, a separate public process for this, as you know, through the uh, public hearing and the yeah. rezoning and, and the meetings. So. Although general principles in the OCP are in place, um, you know, there, there's, there has been the opportunity for people to provide their comments. And I know that council members uh, did consider those comments. Uh, but ultimately, they have to make a decision. Yeah. Thank you. Any further? Any motion to adjourn? Thank you. Seconder. All those in favor?